This time we're going to take a little bit different approach to a painting. We're going to focus on shapes. So we'll start with just the shape of his shirt. We're not drawing in advance. We're just focusing specifically on the shape. This can be refined later, changed a little color wise, highlights added later. We're just putting in the main shape of the shirt. You can give this a try with your own projects. Pick something that's small. You can even start with something really simple like a chicken or something like that that isn't a real complex shape. You know, a person or a horse can be quite challenging if you're not used to this, but pick a really simple little shape and just block in looking only at the main shapes. And then later on, you'll block in the highlights. I'm going to refine this shape later, but I'm just concentrating only on shapes. Starting with the simplest shape, the legs go down. We'll put the legs down here. Add the hands and the head, just looking at each thing as I do it. And if you want to give this a try with a really simple project, don't put too much pressure on yourself. If it isn't what you want, wipe it off. Do it again. Wipe it off. Do it again. Wipe the whole thing off. Start over as many times as it takes, and you will find you'll lose a little bit of your fear of doing it, and your projects will improve each time you give it another try. It's a really good exercise. You'll find it's especially true if you're the type of artist who is used to drawing everything in and, and coloring within the lines. It's going to be really uh, challenging for you to just work without any drawing at all, but it's a really good idea. I'm working in uh, copra water soluble oils here and I can easily come around the outside and the paint will pick up the edges and smooth them off. But you can work in acrylic as well. You could just paint over the areas along the edges that were too, uh, that needed to be brought in a little bit. So now I'm going to work on some of the highlights, again, trying to block in the main shape of the light. I've basically got one color for dark and one color for light. I put the first shapes down and then I went ahead. Now I'm going ahead and putting the shapes of the light and this will start to give it form. It really is light and shadow that create form. We can draw a shape, but it's only a shape. It doesn't really have dimensional form until you start putting light and shadow in it. Just continuing to refine little bit of lights along the edges of his shorts. You can see there's not very many values here. There's basically just light and shadow. I'll begin to add the highlights in his legs next. Just a lighter value. It all starts to take shape as you have light and shadow and keeping the light and shadow shapes really simple will make it easier to work with and make the shapes more definite.
See how that immediately gives him shape to the side of his head? A few little lines to indicate hairs. Because that's where you get a lot of your textures, where the light meets the shadow. I will just continue to do some refining. Touches here and there before I start to cut in the background around the figure. Just step back and look. Decide if the overall shapes are what you're looking for. Where is it lighter? Where is it darker? You'll see as I advance the video forward here that uh, I've just been refining the edges. We're just going to move on a little bit further ahead in the painting. Some last minute finishing touches before I go ahead and cut in the background. Let me just show you a bit of a different view here. There's my original reference photo and I'll just start using a basic neutral color that is approximately the color of the grass to cut around and further refine some edges. As I mentioned, if you're working in acrylic, instead your painting will be dry and you can just paint your background around it. It creates a much more cohesive and less um, cut out and pasted on kind of a look if you do it that way rather than paint the background and then put the figure on it. So I'm just going to skip ahead here so that it's uh, not too long a movie for you to watch. I'm just going to, you'll see when I come back, we'll have gone around much of the edge of the painting, but it's just a matter of coming in uh, with the oils since they're wet. I can smooth the edge if I want it really sharp. I can just go along it and redraw, but I can also softly blend an edge if I want. So just bringing this whole background area down and around. That way if the paint happens to dry before I get to doing the entire background, I've got the edges completed. So I can put a softer edge or a sharper edge. And yet the background is not right close to the edge of the figure, so I've got a little bit to work with bringing my background color in if the paint has happens to be dry. Now where the color of the background changes up around his head, I will bring in a different color. That won't commit me completely to exactly where the horizon line is, but I'm pretty sure that it's around that area. And I'll keep all the edges soft if I do want to go up or down a little bit with the horizon line.
Now I'm going to make sure I add some really warm colors to where the sun hits the light of the skin. Sunlight tends to go through fingers and ears and places like that and um, sometimes shows up as really red, light warm red in the skin tones. So I'm going to add some color in there so it's not all a neutral painting so that the focus of attention definitely goes to him. Take a little bit of extra care to do the extra details in the hands. There's a lot of expression in the hands. Um, see, I'm bringing in some nice bright colors too. We don't want it to be too neutral. The sun kind of hits through the fingers and the ear, places like that. So nice, bright, warm red. So here we are at the end of the painting of the figure itself. This is um, most of the painting process time-wise. The background doesn't take a whole lot of time. Once I've got the bulk of the figure done, I can just put the background in rather quickly. but. It's worth it spending a little extra time on the hands, fingers, right here. Once I finish this last bit of refining here, I'll just show you the final painting. I'll add it to the end of the clip here. So here it is, this is the finished painting. This painting is going to be a graduation gift for my nephew. Uh, I took the photo of him when we were all out dog walking one day in Nose Hill Park and he was just marching on ahead doing his thing. I just thought it would make a really cute little graduation present for him. I'd always wanted to paint it. If you would like to see more videos uh, more step-by-steps on how I approach paintings. This is just one method. Sometimes I will do a very detailed drawing first. This one is in oil. I also have videos and blog posts on acrylic. Lots of different projects for people who have never painted before, for, for people who are just getting into the art world, uh, advice on showing and galleries and all the things you might need to know as you advance in your art. Even if you've been painting for years, you'll find all kinds of new ideas, uh, tips on challenging yourself, different approaches to try, lots of information here. It's only $12 a month Canadian to get you started. That'll get you a month's access to all the different videos and you can cancel at any time, so it's risk-free. This deluxe membership with no initiation fee is for a limited time. So check it out if you are interested and thanks for watching my video. Now hang on until the end because this is going to be fun. D minus five, four, three, two, one.